welcome again to Ghana Web TV and I'm your host Venice Oswa. It's another exciting time with another actress, a very famed actress in Ghana. And today we are going to be speaking to Miss Martha Ankuma. Welcome. Thank you, beautiful. You look beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. You also look very beautiful. Thank you. Um, blood of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why people call me that. That's why I'm here to ask. Why do they call you blood of Jesus? I, I don't know why. I don't know why, but it's not, it's not a I bad name. I heard you always shouting blood of Jesus, blood of Jesus. I don't know why. They, <laughs> <laughs> but it's, it's not a bad name at all. It's mm. a good name because the name of God is mm. a strong tower and those who run to it are saved. Yeah. And so when Jesus has been attached to your name, you should know that you're on a good name. Your foundation is solid. Mm. So I like it. <laughs> I, I love Jesus. But you always shout blood of Jesus. No, it's a movie I did, and I think I was a virgin in the movie. I played the role of a virgin girl, and I think a guy wanted to rape me or something, and I said, blood of Jesus or something. I'm sure, I'm sure. And then from yeah. there, yeah. it became your nickname. Blood of Jesus, over anything. <laughs> when I started searching about Mantan Kuma, the first thing I saw was being described to you uh, was blood of Jesus. I'm like, wow. really, this is quite interesting. I have to find out from you. Martha, tell us about your childhood. You know, well, early days. Um, it's 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 wonderful. You know, my dad was a very nice person, mm -hmm. but he's he's dead now. Oh, my mom, so my mom has always been a a very nice woman too. You know, she's mm -hmm. been our mother and she's still our mother, even though we are grown up and all that. But mm -hmm. she has been there for us and she still loves us no matter what. Mm -hmm. And so, growing up with my mom and dad. It's an awesome experience. It's something I'll never forget. You know, I'll tell my children about it. I'll tell my grandchildren about it. My dad taught me how to ride bicycles. You know, wow. yeah, yeah, he taught me how to ride a bicycle. He even wanted to teach me how to ride a moto. moto, yeah, but <laughs> I don't know, yeah. And so um, he, his, he was an awesome father. My mom was quite a strict woman, mm -hmm. but she, she's also a very nice person as well and a very hardworking woman. And so uh, my, my childhood has been great. My mom will push us to go to church and my dad too the same. My dad was an Adventist when he was alive. Oh, that's why you haven't spent your... Yeah, that's why I have clipped. This is clipped. Yeah. You know, this is clipped. This is not real earrings. This is clipped. I just hold this when I'm coming for an interview or when I'm going to an occasion that I have to just look at. That's all. So my dad was an Adventist, but my mom is a, is a Pentecostal and she's a very strict Christian and she will make sure that you go to church before you come back and eat rice water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it's, it's been like that mm -hmm. right from childhood. They educated us. I went to Arabaka Presby, mm -hmm. JHS. Now you guys call it JHS. Our yeah. time was JSS. <laughs> yes. I went to Laboni Secondary School. Oh, yeah. Then I went to JU University, mm -hmm. and so I got, I graduated with um, public relations, first degree in public relations. Yes. You mentioned somewhere that you, you lost your father along the line. Yeah. How was the experience, you know, without a father anymore? It, yeah, I, I think when I lost my father, I had completed the university mm -hmm. and I was working already. Mm -hmm. But I miss him. I still miss him, you know. Mm -hmm. My dad was a true dad, you know. Mm -hmm. Someone would say, my father was a father, you know. And so I loved my dad so much and I still miss him, no matter what. I don't think I'll forever forget about him because any day, any time, I keep mentioning his name and I'm sure wherever he is, yeah. he must be proud of me. I'm sure yeah. he is, he is. How was the journey to stardom? The Matankuma so I started you know acting today. right from childhood. I started acting when I was in class six. Mm -hmm. That is um, Fun World Kida Fest. I don't know if you ever heard of Fun World Kida Fest mm -hmm. at the National Theatre. So that's where I started from. Then, you know, it's moved from Fun World Kida Fest to TPS. TPS is theatre program for schools. You know, we do stage performances for school children, um, secondary schools, JHS and all that. Then I moved from TPS to doing TV series like Here's Matron, mm -hmm. Sun City, Where's Your Mobile, all that glitters, St. James Hotel, mm -hmm. and so on. Then I started doing movies and adverts and all that. I read somewhere that you now you are now very selective on the kind of movies that you, you, you start in. I learned you now 
solely accept Christian themed, you know, movies. How true is that? It's true, but it's not really true. Okay. So not necessarily it has to be a Christian movie, but it has to be a movie with a good moral value. Mm -hmm. It has to be something that people can watch and learn something from. Mm -hmm. You know, a movie that when you see you are like. So I went to the cinema to watch this movie and I learned something out of the movie. I just didn't go to watch any kind of or any other movie. And so for me, the kind of jobs I do, I'm very selective about it. That's why this day, it looks like I don't do a lot, yeah. but it has to be a good one before I show my face in mm. there. Yeah. Are you a born again Christian? I've always been a Christian. Mm. I'm sure I've been a born again Christian right <laughs> from childhood. I've always been a Christian oh, but, by the grace um, of God. You know, the Matankoma that we know, you used to star in very rock tech, you know, movies. Which I will still do. I always tell people. Because oh. it, it wasn't it wasn't sort of like the way you are describing it. Mm. It's a role I'm playing. Okay. And so for an actress, I believe I'm supposed to be versatile. Okay. So let's say um, I do a movie and I'm in a movie with you and I slap you. Do I go around slapping people? No. It's a role I played. Okay. And so we should try and differentiate our roles we do in the movie from our real lives. Okay. And so this is the real me. What I do in the movie is just an act. Okay. I shoot movies, I play a role. It's because I do it so well. Mm -hmm. That is why it becomes the talk of the day. Yeah. But let's be real. In real life, people, with time, yeah. I believe people have come to know that okay so she's different from when she's on set yeah. some people also think that you chose christianity over your career which is the movie um, because at the peak of it matter vanished how true is that they, they, some of them feel you became very christian like like holy mary so you don't want to act in movies again no, I just did a movie and um, mm. I've did some movies, they are not out yet, but mm. my movie is premiering this very September called okay. The Beautiful Mind. Oh. I'm sure you've seen it yeah, all over, I've Beautiful Mind, mm. premiering very, um, this very mm. September. And so for me, I would choose Christianity over everything mm. because I didn't create myself. I can't pay for this air I'm breathing. Yeah. It is God who created me. The Bible says God created me in his own image. And he made me beautiful. And at the end of the day, he said, this is what I've created, and it's beautiful. And there's no way I would say I'm going to choose my career over my Christian life because he gave it to me. Mm -hmm. The fact that you are interviewing me, he gave me that grace, that recognition, that today you are here mm -hmm. doing this interview. I didn't get it myself, not because I'm, I'm a good actress, not because of my hard work, not because I'm talented. There are a lot of people out there who are a thousand times better than most of us on TV. Mm -hmm. But it takes the grace of God for you to be noticed. And so I don't take God for granted. When it comes to Christianity, any day, any time, I will mention the name of God. Now, does that? People say, okay, um, I became so creepy, that's why yeah. I wasn't acting. No, no. But social media, you know, at first, there was nothing like Instagram. Yeah. There was nothing like Facebook. There was nothing like, um, is it um, Twitter, Snap, Snapchat. Snapchat, and the rest. And so, how do you tell people about God? How do you share a beautiful word you've heard from? Mm. You've heard from God, you've heard from your pastor on a mm. Sunday morning. Mm. The only way you can do that is to go out there, maybe on a crusade or something. But by the grace of God, social media has come to stay. Mm. And so the only way I can tell my fans, who I don't get to meet every day, but they get to follow me on Instagram, to tell them about Jesus. And so when I go to church on Sunday, and my pastor preaches a nice message, and I feel like this is the word that I should put it out mm. there. I don't have a choice than to put it out there because I'm saving a soul, I'm comforting a soul, mm. I'm giving someone hope. Yeah. And so that is why I put pictures and I put such words there, just to encourage and motivate people. And so I act, I'm still an actress. I don't do anything apart from acting, despite the fact that I own other things, mm. but I'm an actress. I believe I'm born to act. I have so much passion for it and I'll never stop acting. But God comes first and it's always God first. I love that. Where do you fellowship? ICGC. Oh, I see. International so Central Gospel how did Church. You, how did it um, take the backlash, you know, against your, the founder, Dr. Utabo? That I wouldn't talk about it. Mm. What I know is um, the truth will prevail at the right time. Mm. 
I have faith in God that God loves his children mm -hmm. and whatever situation they find themselves in, mm -hmm. he has a way of bringing them out. I believe in God. I, be I have so much faith in my pastor. You know, okay. he's, been, he's been there for us for a very long time. He's been a good pastor with so much integrity. So I believe that the truth will prevail and definitely God is in charge of his life. God will take care of him. For me, I believe God is good, no matter what. God is, is good. good, yeah. How do you handle rumors about negativity? With, with, with this industry, you just have to have a tough skin. Mm -hmm. So you don't need to respond to it. I believe when you know better, you act better, mm -hmm. you do better. And so whatever people are saying about you, as long as you know deep inside your heart, that is not the truth they are saying. They are just spreading fallacy about you. Trust me. You don't have to be bothered. Cause are you going to explain yourself to people all the time? Mm -hmm. No, the people you even want to explain yourself to, mm -hmm. do they really care about you? Do they really do they want to know your story? Mm -hmm. No. So you just have to have a tough skin. Just keep on doing what is right. And at the right time, just like I said, the truth shall prevail. At one point, did you ever feel like giving up? Due to no. pressure, due no. to anything? No, no. No, no, because I started acting, just like I said, mm -hmm. right from childhood. I have so much passion for acting. If I did not go to work with my university certificates okay. and after my national service and everything, I still didn't give up on anything that I was doing, mm -hmm. even though I had job opportunities and I decided to act. There was no way I was going to give up on acting because of what people would say. It's not possible. Do you play a specific role in church? Yes. It's you funny when I say it. I'm in the food do. department. <laughs> what do you do? <laughs> we share food for church workers. <laughs> it's so funny when I say it. I'm in the food department. <laughs> we share food for church workers. That's what we do. <laughs> yeah, that's, <laughs> that's what we do. So I'm in the food department. Yes. Okay. Yes, we serve the church workers like ushers and everything. They have to eat in the morning mm. after they help with everything. Yeah, so that's what I do. Gender and gender equality and then Christianity. You know, the Bible says as as wives, as partners, we should be very submissive. submissive. And then this is the twenty first century. Feminism, you know, we are fighting for our role as women in the society, as career women and then a wife. What is your so being a that? feminist doesn't mean you shouldn't respect your husband. Mm -hmm. Doesn't mean you shouldn't be submissive. Mm -hmm. People don't get it. Being a feminist means you stand for your rights, but you stand for what is right, which you know what is right. Mm -hmm. So you can't talk to your husband anyhow and think because you are a woman, you are right. Mm -hmm. No. There's nothing wrong with cooking for your husband. There's nothing wrong helping your husband. There's nothing wrong supporting your husband. It is nice. Mm -hmm. It creates a good example for even the children to look up to. Mm -hmm. And so when people talk about being a feminist, they're like, I, and I'm not supposed to do this. Mm -hmm. And because we're in the twenty first, he has to do this. Mm -hmm. He has to. He can know. also as well wash, cook, sweep. He can. He should. Depends on the way you talk to him. Mm -hmm. There are several ways of talking to our partners. I can say, um, Herr Benes, you will feel insulted. Yes. But if I say, Benes, can you please help me with this kitchen table? You would love to do it. So it's basically about communication, how we communicate to our partners. Are you single? Oh, yes. <laughs> so you are searching, right? By the grace of God. <laughs> <laughs> what keeps the matter from brand in shape? The fear of God. The Bible says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Mm. I have loved God right from childhood, you know. My close friends will tell you that no matter the role I play, mm. no matter where I am, as soon as I get back from set, the first thing is I want to go to church. I want to spend time with God. Mm. For me, God is relevant in my life. He's a significant factor. I don't take him for granted because mm. I know where I'm coming from. I say the grace of God because the grace of God has made it possible for today. Mm -hmm. And so I don't take God for granted. And so what keeps my brand is the fear of God. The fear of God will direct your steps. Yeah. The fear of God tells you the kind of friends you should allow into your life. Yes. How you should look. The kind of words that should come out of your mouth. And so 
I give credits to the fear of God. The fear of God disciplines your mindset. And so basically, I say it's the fear of God. Are you pressured to settle down? No. So some people no. say that, um, you know, you are aging. No, as no. I, I, hear, I hear that from society rather, but not from my family. Okay. No, no. But I hear that from sometimes on Instagram, people will ask you, Hey, Stamatha, so when are you getting married? Instagram, oh. <laughs> Facebook, oh. but my family members are not asking me that. Yeah. So. And so I just know that in God's own time, he makes all things beautiful. So I'm not pressured at all. Could it be the case that, you know, the men, you know, they, they see matter to be very higher than them, so they are finding it difficult to approach? I, am I high? <laughs> <laughs> Sister, my high. <laughs> <laughs> no, maybe we are uh, women. I, I, I don't so. know. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But Charlie, <laughs> I don't want to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> but just like I said, mm-hmm. in God's own time, He makes all things beautiful. Mm-hmm. So I believe it's the timing of God is right. I see the Mata Kuma Foundation. Can you talk to us about it? What do you actually do? So basically, we started Mazakuma Foundation. That was like four years ago. Mm-hmm. We've been helping the children. We, we actually we started with the children and the ambassador um, autism ambassadors, okay. and so trying to create awareness for children living with autism or children who have autism who are autistic. Mm-hmm. And so, um, I think three years down the line, we decided to channel our energy into quality education. That is creating. Um, trying to raise funds for children in deprived communities for them to have a good education for them to have a quality education okay. it's this simple that's what we do so we try to let people support us for us to help children in deprived communities mm-hmm. to build their lives we just try to raise funds funds like books pencils school bags school uniforms mm-hmm. um, chalkboard we call it blackboard our yeah. time chalkboard i mean anything to encourage those children to go to school so that is what my my foundation is all about i always tell people we'll be happy if people come to support us with money but not really what we really need is um the books the school bags Mm -hmm. the school uniforms the school shoes the chalkboard um desk anything to just to encourage those children to feel like going to school that's what my foundation is about yeah okay Aside the philanthropic activities that you do because of the Mother Foundation, I, I also know you, you have a salon. What influenced uh, you establishing that? When I believe is another source of income and also to create jobs for people. All of us are waiting on the government to do something for mm. us. Why are we not doing something for ourselves? So I've created jobs for people. At least, <laughs> by the what, grace of God. Um, how many staff do you have? So I have like, um, I have to count them. I have like four workers now. Okay. Yeah, I have like four workers now. Okay. So I have like four workers now. Yeah. Okay. And so I've created jobs for people. And so I, and I, I felt like it's a way my fans will also get to meet me in person. Mm-hmm. You know, people see on social media and all that they try to chat you up but you know i have a salon mm. if you love me that much just come and do your hair <laughs> <laughs> my hair is my mother's place you know uh. yeah so just come and do your hair mm. just come and fix your nails just come and do a pedicure and a manicure you get to see me we'll talk fashion so many people admire matter because of her fashion sense what goes into your the selection of your outfits for me, I, I believe you can look very good by not showing yourself, by not revealing any parts of your body. Mm. You can look good. People say you can look sexy, but decent. I believe in decency. What you wear speaks a lot about the kind of image you put out there. So if you're not looking that good, you know what? When you look good, you feel good. It draws some kind of attention to you. It draws, it draws decent people into your life. Mm-hmm. People see you and they just want to associate with you because of your looks. Mm-hmm. And so for me, right from childhood, I, I decided, I told myself that, listen, I'm going to live a good and a decent life. Mm-hmm. It's a conscious effort and I don't joke with it. I want to be decent. I want to be decent. Mm-hmm. I want to look good, but very decent. Okay. 
For me, as an actress, I believe I'm a role model to people, to a lot of people. So people look up to me. And I believe whatever I put out there, people take it serious. Yes. That's why you will say, okay, so Martha, people, people are saying you stopped acting and you get it. Mm. Because I was putting the word of God out there. It shows yeah. people are following what I put out there. And so these girls are coming from SHS or SS. Mm. I always get confused about it. SHS or SS. They're coming out of school. And they want to dress in a certain kind of way. At least there should be some of us who look very decent because they look up to us. They shouldn't be showing their certain parts of their bodies. It, it doesn't really make, I don't want to use any word, but let's be real. And so for me, I believe I'm a role model. People look up to me and if they are learning something, they must learn something which is right for them, which is good. It must be something positive. I need to impact the society in a more positive way. It has to be good. The Ghana movie industry. It's, the argument now that is that it's, it's dying slowly. I think somewhere, was it last year or two, even Nelson tweeted that now of late, what we see is most of these celebrities, the actors, actresses are always slain on red carpets, but we don't see their efforts in the movies. What is your comment on that? Do you think now these celebrities or these actors are choosing slaying, you know, dressing gorgeously, expensively for cameras, but they are not putting so much effort? Or you think the government should as well also invest in it? Can I be very honest and very blunt? Because this is what I do for a living. Mm -hmm. I'm very passionate about mm -hmm. it. We need help in our movie industry. Some individuals started producing movies. That's how come some of us got jobs to do. Mm -hmm. But these days, most of us go out to shoot in Nigeria. And people say they don't see our movers because the CD business is totally out of the market. Mm -hmm. Nobody buys a CD anymore. Mm -hmm. Let's be real. When was the last time you bought a CD? I don't remember. But think about it. Nigerians are still in business because they have cinemas all over the country. They have cinemas in every state you can imagine. Mm -hmm. Cinemas in Asaba. They have cinemas in Enugu, Oweri, Imo, Wari, Delta, Calabar. They have cinemas in, they have like almost 20 something cinemas even in just in Lagos. Mm -hmm. How many cinemas do we have in Ghana? Just two. The whole Ghana. I think three. The whole Ghana, I think, is just three. Mm -hmm. The one in Kumase, that was just, I think, so, opened, uh, um, launched just recently, mm -hmm. right? Uh huh. Um, the Kumase Mall. The second one is in um, Accra Mall. Mm -hmm. The third one is in the West Hills Mall. How do we make money? So we need cinemas in this country, at least. We need more than 10 cinemas in Accra, or let's say at least 10 cinemas for the start will help our industry. So we need 10 cinemas in Accra for the start. Mm -hmm. We need cinemas in Kumasi, not just the one in the mall. Okay. We need cinemas in Takwade. We need cinemas in Tamale. We need cinemas in Bongahafo. Mm -hmm. We need cinemas in wherever you can think of. Any capital town you find in Ghana, we need cinemas there. Because that's what the Nigerians are doing and it's keeping them in business. Mm -hmm. What we do tells a story about Ghana. What we do creates jobs for people out there both on the screen and also behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. What we do create jobs for people like mm -hmm. you. Yeah. And so the government needs to support us because the CD business is gone. Individuals can also support us, individual investors. They can also build cinema centers mm -hmm. to support our industry. It also creates jobs for us. So basically, I'm going to be sincere about it. We need cinemas. And secondly too, the telenovelas on TV, okay. the foreign telenovelas, the Mexican soaps and the Hindi soaps or whatever they are showing has also killed our industry because they are always showing them on TV 247. They are showing them in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. Sometimes you wake up 5 a.m. and they are even showing them. <laughs> Apart from that, they are even speaking our local dialects now and they have so many sponsors on board. Who is watching a Ghanaian telenovela? Who is watching a Ghanaian movie? I mean, let's be real. So the TV stations can also help bring our industry back. If they decide to put us in business by creating jobs for us, putting us, doing telenovelas for us to feature in there, because they have the TV stations already, they just need to go find sponsors, like the way they found sponsors for the other um, foreign telenovelas, yeah. which they have put on TV. What influences 
your makeup and everything? Mm. So my makeup is always done by Magda Kuto. Mm. Magda Kuto. She's on Instagram. You can follow her. Magda mm. Kuto. She does my makeup, mm. and my hair is always by Martha's Place. Mm. You know, and my dress is always by Dash Fashion DH. Dash Fashion GH, mostly Dash Fashion GH. Mm. As long as it's not from a boutique, <laughs> it's Dash Fashion GH. Mm. Dash, they are all on Instagram. So Dash Fashion GH, they do my dresses for me. Mm. And um, Magda Kuto, she does my makeup. And my hair is always by Martha's Place. As ambassador for so many um, products, Glow is number one. Yeah. And then what other? Glow, Glow. Mm. For now it's Glow. It's just Glow. No. Okay. What do you do for them? So Glow, I market their products for them, mm. like the Glow Yakata. You just have to buy a one CD credit of Glow, mm. and you can chat till you drop. You can browse till you drop. I see. You know? And so, for now being the ambassador, Glow is giving out a lot of credits out. They are dashing out credits. They are putting you um, live on Facebook for free. Mm. We are also organizing the Glow Laughter Fest and the Mega Fest mm. and all that. And so for now, I just do glow promotions for them, do adverts for them, and it's good. Your last mm -hmm. words. There's a lot you can do, as long as you don't give up on yourself, because God hasn't given up on you. In his time, he makes all things beautiful. I know it's very difficult when you are being patient, when you are waiting, but trust me, it pays to wait. In his time, he makes all things beautiful. Good things happen in good times. And so just have faith in God. Keep doing the hard work and just say to yourself, I can do it. It is possible. I can achieve it when I don't give up on myself because God hasn't given up on me. And definitely, you see your dream come true. It is possible. There is time for everything, no matter what you're going through in life. Just relax and have patience and then trust in God. Just believe that whatever you're going through now, his, your answers are on its way. So see you same time next week on Showbiz Strength.